All right. Hello, beloveds. I am Reverend Amani Malaika, and we are in the middle of our series on the quantum you. And today I want to talk to you about allowing the leap, allowing the quantum leap through surrendering. Yay, surrendering. It's everybody's favorite thing. No, actually, it's not everybody's favorite thing, which is why I want to talk about it today. So surrendering, because, you know, in metaphysics, I think a lot of us kind of want like the, the seven steps to quantum leap. We want to know that there's this practice and, and, and uh, not recipe, but recipe. I'm going to say recipe. Recipe to it that I can manifest, I can leap into a new reality if I just do these seven things. It is not like that. There are no seven steps to quantum leaping. But what I want to share with you is from Amit Goswami. And in his book, he shares what really quantum leaping is. And he shares it from this scientist, Niels Bohr. And I'm going to, I was looking for the date, but I'm not, you can look it up. Niels Bohr, B-O-H-R, is the one who discovered the quantum leap. And all it is, is an atom travels in an orbit, right? Basic science, if you remember from school. And it travels in an orbit and it stays in the same orbit. That's just what it does. But there's this quantum leap that happens when that atom jumps discontinuously to a new orbit. And there's no, uh, proof that you can even see that atom travel from one place to another. It's in this orbit, and then suddenly, bam, it's in this orbit. That is a quantum leap. You and I, when we say we want to manifest, when we say we want to see something change in our lives through the use of metaphysics and manifesting, are trying to quantum leap. That's ultimately what we're trying to do. We're trying to leave this orbit as you know it and get over in that other orbit or the orbit you don't even know is possibility yet. And in order to do that, what I know about quantum leaping in my own life and through my own experience is that when it actually happens, one, I have never um, been able to like order it on a menu. That has never happened. <laughs> All I know that I have done is I've readied myself through practice through spiritual practice. I have readied myself through meditation. I have readied myself through study, through self-study. I have readied myself through breaking free, which is what I talked about earlier in this series, through, from letting go of false beliefs and limiting ideas and conditioning that I have inherited in multiple ways. That is all the readying I have done that have made the, the manifesting possible. But what I, I was really thinking about, like, so what, what does it, what could I offer? What does it feel like? What, what has worked? What has shown up? If, are there any habits or patterns in what I have experienced in manifesting in my life that I could offer to others? That, you know, it looked like this and then I did that. And, and ultimately, no, there really are no seven steps. I think this is where we have to remember that this is, yes, there is science here and there is great mystery and there is grace. But what I can tell you is it felt soft, felt open. I felt willing. There was something in me that shifted to welcome in a new possibility. And I think that's because of the conscious practice of breaking the conditioning, of getting conscious like, oh, this is not a true thing that I am believing. This is not a true story I am telling. And because I've gotten conscious, I begin to open myself up to something else, even if I don't know what it is. And I wanted to share from my own life, a story about 10 years ago, I was not well, I wasn't feeling well, I was having all this kind of health stuff, and I knew that something was not right. 
And um, of course, you know, as many of us as women and particularly as black women in medical offices do not ever get answers. So it took me a long time um, because as a black woman, they did not test me for the right things because they didn't ask me if my mother was white. And I had this thing that was really common in white women. Anyways, that is a tangent. But come to find out I had thyroid cancer. And I remember many things in that time, but one of those things was I was sure that my well-being was dependent on these people outside of, outside of me. That my health, that my survival was dependent on their knowledge and their um, prescriptions. And I kept running into all of this bullshit. Oh, you should do this and you got to do that. And here, take this and go to the see this specialist and blah, 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 blah. And I kept not feeling better. And I kept feeling worse. And slowly, slowly along the way, I literally, in one of the, my prayer during that time, I will share this with you. My prayer during that time was I'm getting my gift. If I'm going through this bullshit, there's a gift in this because I know that God is always moving for good and I'm getting my gift. <laughs> that was my prayer. And so I would visualize every morning when I woke up a big white box with a red bow. But I kept looking for my gift out there. I kept looking for my gift from what the doctor was going to tell me and the right pills and if they would just get my medicine right or this surgery or that chemo or blah, blah, blah. And along the way, every time I would leave one of these appointments, I would leave disappointed. I would leave feeling like I knew nothing more than I knew going in. And I would come home and I would sit in prayer and I quit my whole life. I had a minister say one time in, in seminary, um, when she, people came to her for prayer and counsel that had cancer, she would always tell them to quit their life. So I was like, I'm quitting my life. I quit my life. I had a lot of time. And so I would sit in and I would ponder and I kept getting this message, this knowing that there was no answer out there, that all of the answers were in here and that I was going to have to take full ownership of my own well-being and my health. And I did not like that answer. I did not like it a lot. And I kept looking and I kept looking, but slowly, 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 slowly over time, I began to understand that I truly, truly, truly knew what to do and that I could trust this impulse in me. I could trust the divine intelligence, the one mind that is my mind to guide me. And it did, which meant I didn't actually need to do any radiation or chemo. I actually knew what was the right things to put in my body and what were the wrong things. And I could trust my own authority as I took a quantum leap into a greater reality of myself. And I'm telling you, I did not order it in a menu. All I could do was, be, was spend enough time with my own self, an honest assessment and willingness to receive and it was in that, that the leap into a new orbit of my own authority, of my own health and well-being came into fruition. And I've been cancer-free since. It's like not even been a thing. Not even a thing. And not because I did any grand, big medical ta-da. I truly believe it was because I was willing to leap into a greater experience and understanding of my true nature and to follow my own authority. So that is now the advice I give to anybody in a health challenge. Anybody struggling with significant health challenges, you are the boss of you. Your body knows exactly what to do and everybody on your medical team works for you. You get to decide and you know. So again, I can't give you seven steps to quantum leaping, seven steps to manifest your new world, but I can say that you have to ready yourself. And what I want you to consider doing in that readying is to learn what your quantum leap feels like. 
Learn what that impulse towards something new and different feels like and how to recognize when there is something in you guiding you in, in an unusual or new way and how to trust it. I want you to spend time remembering when you've had that experience before. And I want you to write down or talk with a friend or a prayer partner or in your small group, however you function, to share what it felt like and what the sensations actually were in your body. Here's why I think it's so important. This truly, truly, truly is not so supernatural. You are not natural and manifesting and quantum leaping is supernatural, right? This is one of the mistakes you and I make about our true nature. Jumping orbits, leaping into new worlds and possibilities is our nature. You are a quantum of the quantum. This possibility is not separate from you, it is in you which means you can discern through your own being what it feels like. You can discern. I want you to think of a time in your life when you felt closed to possibility. I want you to think of a time in your life where you had a feeling that you should turn left, but you didn't, and something probably happened that you didn't want to happen. There's a story from Cole Arthur Riley's book, This Here Flesh, where she talks about driving with her husband, and the day before they even got in the car, she said in a group of friends, we're going to hit a deer. And they were like, okay, weirdo. And then the next day they got in the car to go on this road trip, and they were driving, and she said to her husband in mid-whatever, we're going to hit a deer, you need to slow down. And he's like, okay, weirdo. And Buddy slowed down, and they hit a deer. And because they slowed down, that deer survived, and their car was not that damaged. Is that supernatural? Is that extra woo-woo? Or is that our actual nature, to have a knowing? It is our nature to feel at really subtle, subtle levels but we must surrender to it. We must surrender to like, why am I hearing that we're gonna hit a deer? Why am I understanding that I'm not gonna actually do the radiation, that my doctor's really mad that I'm not doing the radiation, but I'm not doing it because that's, that's my impulse. Why do we think that that is somehow separate and supernatural rather than our nature? And I believe this is what we're after in this spiritual work. Not only is it claiming the wholeness of ourselves and knowing ourselves as holy, fully good, amen, yes, but actually learning that we live in a spiritual universe and we are spiritual beings and can use these tools that we have become conditioned away from, like our knowings like our inner authority and wisdom. And those quantum leaps that we'd so deeply desire result from us moving closer and closer to those truths. For us spending the attention and the time to make conscious what it is we dream of, what it is we imagine, Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind, said that imagination is fire from the heavens. That's how powerful our imaginations are. And yet we've conditioned ourselves away because we are all serious grown-ups and that imagination stuff is for kids. No. Your imagination is fire from the heavens and it is speaking to you and guiding you into a greater and greater good right now. But you and I must surrender to it. You know, it's, it's courageous to say to a room full of friends, we're going to hit a deer tomorrow, right? We have to be willing to surrender to like, I am hearing this thing, I'm feeling this thing, I'm knowing this thing, and I'm going to say it and share it out loud. I'm going to tell my doctor, yeah, I'm not doing that. Right? This is courageous. This is part of that surrendering 
to a greater truth that is available and talking to you, but you've got to know how to sense it. You know, like I said in the last segment of our series, you have to have ears to hear, eyes to see, heart to feel. And this is the work of metaphysics. It is not just this heady, let me learn the science. If you want to use these spiritual laws, these universal laws, these laws of nature, you've got to be willing to be present and aware in your own body so that you can discern the leap impulse. And what another way that you can do that, and this is your homework for the week, is I want you to once again slow down and practice the discernment in your own being. And you're going to do that by not only spending time remembering times when you've known and not acted, and remembering times when you've known and acted, but really spending time with what could those moments teach you now? When you think back to like, I had an impulse, I had a feeling, I knew a thing, I had intuition, and I didn't act, or I did act, but what can it teach you now so that you can create your own process of readying yourself for the quantum leap, of surrendering to that wisdom that is in you, that is guiding you, that's got the great ideas that wants you to leap over there into this new way of being. That's your homework. I love you. Blessings.